this year uh, for a real Christmas, part of our real Christmas experience was what we call Christmas Expresses. Christmas Expresses are when we get to come to the church or we go to people's houses and we get to bless them and surprise them with different gifts with the help of life group members or different family members. It was such an awesome experience. Our first member of our Mount Hope family that we were able to surprise this year was Angie. Without the surprise her. Surprise! <laughs> and Merry Christmas! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> she volunteers at the church. She is a faithful member of our Mount Hope family, and we heard from somebody in her life group that she needed a new bed. So we were able to partner with her life group leaders. We showed up at her house. We brought a queen bed, a box spring, uh, the bed frame. We brought winter coats for her, hats, gloves, new uh, sheets, new bedding. She cried as soon as we walked through the door. Oh man, it made it completely worth it. We got her old bed out of there. We set up her new bed. We put the new bedding on. She was so excited and just felt so loved by God and our church family this Christmas season. It was awesome. We also had an opportunity to go and visit two of our SPIN students. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> We were able to take them several different gifts. We took Izzy a bed and we took her brother Isaiah a few different items, some clothes and some new boots for this winter. Oh! And we were also able to provide uh, an opportunity for both of them to be able to come to winter and summer retreat. It was such an awesome experience. We're going to retreat! Let's go! They were absolutely blown away, incredibly excited. It was such an awesome opportunity to bring a real Christmas to them. Our last Christmas Express was for another one of our students. She goes above and beyond, not just to serve SPIN, but she serves this church as a part of the HELPS team. She is an awesome leader. Uh, so we know that she just got a car and she had a few things uh, that, that she's been working on fixing and paying for. So one of the last major repairs she needed to do on her car was get her windshield replaced. So we came up with this idea for her. She met us at the church. Uh, I got to take her shopping with some of our leaders. We got to just shower her with gifts and we took her shopping at the mall and TJ Maxx and she got all a whole new winter wardrobe. Then we took her to the movies. While we were out with Brielle and shopping, having fun and loving on her, Peter and some of our other guy spin leaders were able to take her car, get her windshield replaced, bring it back to the church. We put a big red bow on it, also put a gift card inside the car because we're sending her to winter and summer retreat 2019. So when we got back, we pulled up to the car. She had no idea this was happening. While we were shopping, we replaced your windshield. Whoa! 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 Is that awesome? Now go open your car door. You are going to winter retreat and some. Whoa! We were able to bless her with exactly what she needed yeah. this holiday season. It was amazing. Mount Hope, all of this is possible because of your generosity. Yeah. Thank you so much for responding to the call of God to help us bring a real Christmas to our church family and this community this season. That's awesome. I love Christmas, right? So everybody has their own, like, I don't know what you do. People have their own traditions, what they do around Christmas time or on Christmas Day. We always have coffee. It's a must, right? Coffee. Amen. Renee makes the best cinnamon rolls, right? And so we always do that. And then on top of that, we worship. We read the Christmas story. And then there's always giving of gifts. I love the joy of giving. In fact, we learned in this mini-series on joy, we learned that John 15 tells us, Jesus said, this is my great desire for you. He said that my joy gets inside of you, and when my joy, the joy of Jesus, gets inside of you, it makes your joy full. So this is great news for everybody, because if you came today, and maybe wherever life landed you, you don't feel like you have a whole lot of joy right now, that's okay, because the goal today is to get his joy inside of you. And when his joy is in you, then your joy gets full. And, like, and when your joy gets full, something happens that invisible joy of Jesus becomes visibly seen on the outside. 
And it's interesting as we study this together that we see throughout the scriptures that when that invisible joy of Jesus becomes visible on the outside, it's often seen in giving. It's the joy of giving, right? So we see these early disciples, the joy of Jesus got inside of them. And what did they do? In Acts chapter 4 and 5, they, they had this unusual giving where they started selling all of their stuff so they could meet the needs of somebody else. That's really unusual, very uncommon. So they'll sell their cars, their donkeys, their cam- whatever, camels, they'll sell all their stuff because, hey, I see a need in somebody else and I've got an extra donkey or I don't really need that one. I think that's phenomenal, beautiful. It is the joy of giving. We see that continue because later the Apostle Paul said there's this group of believers in an area called Macedonia. And these group of believers that were afflicted, they were called poor, didn't have a whole lot. Paul said, they begged me for the opportunity to give to meet somebody else's need. Isn't that uncommon for somebody who has a need and yet they're begging for the chance to give to help somebody else? And we see this joy of giving in Specifically, this uncommon giving, we go all the way back to the Christmas story. In Matthew chapter 2, we trace it all the way back to the wise men. Matthew chapter 2, verse 1 says this. Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea. During the reign of King Herod, about that time some wise men from the east, eastern lands arrived in Jerusalem asking, where is the newborn king of the Jews? We saw his star as it rose and we've come to worship him. King Herod was deeply disturbed when he heard this, as was everyone in Jerusalem. As we look at the story of the wise men, um, something that stands out to me right away, and by the way, Matthew is the only one that included. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the four Gospels. Only Matthew put this in here about the wise men. And when I look at the... uh, the wise men. What stands out to me first is the shocking contrast of hearts. Isn't this shocking to you if you look at this, that there's these wise men, which, which we know are not just three like we see in the Christmas cards or whatever. There's probably a whole caravan of them. They grabbed everybody's attention, but it just wasn't the big group of them. It was their hearts were so different from everybody else. They traveled what would have been hundreds of miles Because they wanted to worship this baby who would be the king of the Jews, Jesus Christ, God's son. And they they followed this star in Matthew 2.10 says, they had exceedingly great joy. And yet Herod and all of Jerusalem were greatly disturbed. What different hearts. What a contrast. Great joy. I'll travel all kinds of miles to worship. And others, they were greatly disturbed. Why was Herod so disturbed? It's the contrast of hearts. It's the heart that, want, the heart that wants to worship the king and the other heart that wants to be the king. Herod wanted to be the king, right? He said, I don't, I don't want there to be another king. In fact, if you read on, you'll find out that Herod had every child under two killed because he wanted to make sure that no king would make it. What a contrast of hearts. Herod, who would want to kill who they came to worship. And then you have the Jerusalem elite who, who they knew. I mean, these guys from way these eastern lands, they came, say, we don't even know where he's supposed to be. We fouled the star. These Jerusalem elite pull out the Bible records, the, script, the Holy Scriptures, and say, well, Micah prophesied he'll be in Jerusalem. And yet they didn't budge. Isn't that a contrast of hearts? Some would travel hundreds of miles. Some wouldn't even walk what would be six miles. That is the heart condition into which the Christmas story takes place. And it's the heart condition that we live in today. A huge contrast of hearts. Those that pursue Jesus. They want to give their all for Jesus. And they want to worship Jesus. And those that are content to just kind of know about him. But not really do anything. In our church family... The contrast is so huge. There's so many people in this house that stand out is they have hearts that love Jesus. They are extraordinary. They, they go the extra mile. They pursue him. And I'm so grateful. You know, Scripture says that uh, talks about us giving extraordinarily to those that have needs and also 
1 Corinthians 16 says this, there are those among you, he said, you should honor them really well. Paul talks specifically about a guy named Stephanus. And he said, this guy Stephanus, he has spent, and his family, they spent their whole lives in service to God's people. And you should honor people like that. And in our own midst, there are people that are just like that. They stand out. They're passionate. And one of them is our very own Marianne Saunders. Marianne, are you here? Would you please come up here real quick? Marianne, where are you at? Come on, Marianne. Marianne, we love you. We appreciate you. Marianne has served and continues to serve in the Global Prayer Center. Overseas, one of the stations of prayer focus, Israel in the Global Prayer Center. Mary prays with me. Mary, and before every service, Marianne's back there. We just prayed together just a few moments ago. We love you. I love you, Marianne. You're precious. We are so glad. Yeah, amen. We're so glad that we're family, that we're church family. And according to the, the Bible, it's, it's right, it's appropriate to honor people in your family who serve really well and who do so. It's not just all that you do. It's the heart that you do it with. It's a heart that stands out. And so we have a gift for you. You love family. And so we want to send your family dinner and a movie, you and your sisters. love you. Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's good to, to take note of the treasures that are around us. It's good to honor them. And uh, there are so many, if, if we wanted to, we could take all day long to do this, but I only have about an hour or so. With that in mind, Jan Seeger, are you here? Jan, would you please come as well? Jan, where are you? Thank you, Jan. Jan, I see, I see the love of Jesus in your eyes. Jan, Jan serves as well in the Global Prayer Center. And uh, I see Jan's car, I'm pretty sure, almost every day. And Jan is up there as Mary Ann is praying for you, taking prayer calls, praying for people around the nation, and praying for our church family, for your family, and for you. And for that, we thank you, Jan. We love you. So we heard that, Jan, you've had some uh, repairs that need to be done in your house. And so we want to help, help make that a reality. So we've got... I think it's $1,000 toward that. We make sure your roof is going to be taken care of. God bless you. And then where's Doug Henderson? Doug, are you here as well? Doug Henderson? Is Doug here? There he is. Come on down, Doug. Doug, I saw you yesterday morning. There's all these, there's all these people that are so passionate about Jesus that fill this place. And one of them is my friend Doug Henderson. And uh so yesterday morning, I look out my office window, and there's Doug. He's come with a, a few other people, Renee, and a few to pray to intercede. Uh, and I value that in you. I know you're a mentor to folks in the cafe. You serve there, and uh, we love you and want to honor you and celebrate you this Christmas season. So you love family. Family's a big deal to you. We're glad you're part of this family. So we plan a very special outing. It's a gift from us to you for you and your family. Merry Christmas.
Matthew chapter 2, verse 10. The wise men, they stood out from everybody else. They had passion to know Jesus, to worship him. Giant contrast of hearts. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy, great joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary, and they bowed down and they worshiped him. Can you even like put yourself in the moment? I even, they traveled hundreds of miles. They finally see who they know will be the king of kings, the king of the Jews, as a baby, and they bowed down. It would have been custom in those days to show great honor and reverence. They would have gotten on their knees, placed their face on the ground to worship him. I mean, to be part of that moment, to be part of that day, How do we worship people today? How do we worship God today? As his people, here's how we do that. We too bow down. We too declare God's worth and that he's worthy. We adore him. We do that with songs. We do that by physically. Sometimes I find myself having to get on my knees because I realize I'm before the king of kings. But also, we worship him in the way that we love each other. We worship him, we show that we revere him, that we honor him in the way that we look out for somebody else. The writer of Hebrews tells us this so clearly. Hebrews 6.10 says, He, God, will not forget how hard you have worked for him and how you've shown your love for him by caring for other believers as you still do. In our church family, there are so many people that care. They, they show they love Jesus and are passionate about him. It becomes visible by the way they love you, by the way they love others. And a few of those that I want to highlight today, one will be David and Dana Snyder. Are you here? David and Dana, will you please come real quickly? There's Dana. Come on, Dana, God bless you. We love you, celebrate you. If you've not had the privilege yet of meeting Dana and Dave, they, uh, you help me if I'm not saying this right, they have adopted seven children. Yeah? They have three biological children, they have a household of 13 people. <laughs> and the, the way that you express the love of Jesus and caring for other people is beautiful. It's remarkable. And uh, we know that family is important to you. Oh, there's Dave. Yeah, come on, Dave. Come on, Spider. Dave and I go, go way back. He used to be our, our sound guy. Uh, back in the Youth Alive days. And what a great family you are. And, and knowing your love for family, I know that, Dana, you actually did an intern here uh, with some of your daughters, I believe a few of your daughters, and uh, using the camera. And uh, you love family, so we, we're, this camera you've been using is yours so you can get pictures of your family. God bless you. And on top of that, we want to send five of your students, five of your children, to uh, youth, or rather to the spin retreat, summer and winter retreats. We love you guys. Thank you. Appreciate you both so much. God bless you. Thank you. Hey, give them a hand, will you please? Merry Christmas. We love, we love you both. God bless. They're so inspirational. Somebody else who inspires me is Steve Rutherford. Steve, where are you at? You here this morning? Come on, give Steve a hand as he comes, will you please? <laughs> Steve is a, uh, a servant of servants. Even this summer, I was looking out. Where's, oh, here he comes. Steve. So this last summer, knowing that our parking lot was going to need some repairs and it was cracking in a lot of spots, um, I look out my window and what do I see? But Steve is out there pulling. This is a big parking lot. 
and he's pulling the weeds out of our parking lot to serve. We so applaud your servant's heart. And uh, you remind me of the scripture in 1 Corinthians 16 where this guy I mentioned, Stephanus, who the apostle Paul said, he mentioned him by name. He wanted everybody to know and said, you should honor people like this who serve so well. And that's you, Steve. So we understand you like fishing, right? So we've got a fishing trip planned for you. Fishing trip with Dave Johnson and the whole team. Gas, stuff's paid for. Dan and Patty Parmenter, where are you at? Would you please come, please? Come on, give, give them a huge round of applause as you come. Dan and Patty. Dan and Patty, you are faithful, and we love you and thank you. Served in the music ministry here at the Hope for 30 years. Dan plays bass. They served in music productions. Merry Christmas! Shocked. You're shocked. Yeah. Well, you didn't know this was coming this Sunday morning, did you? <laughs> well, as as we said, it's is the pattern we see in Scripture is you give. This is what we're called to do. Like when we see that people have a need, like we step up and do that. And also, when there are those among us in our family that it's just right to honor that we step up and do that. And you two are worthy of that kind of honor. Thank you for serving so faithfully. Dan, I know you like wood and woodwork. Up with wood. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas, Dan. Love you. God bless you. They'll get, they'll get this to you. We'll get it to you. We'll get it to you. Merry Christmas. Yes, God bless you both. <laughs> Matthew chapter 2, verse 11 says, They entered the house, saw the child with his mother Mary. They bowed down and they worshiped him. Then they opened their treasure chest and gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Again, the contrast of hearts are on full display. Those that traveled hundreds of miles to worship and to give an outward expression of their inward hearts of love and adoration. And then those that didn't bother to even stop by. And these gifts that they gave they were extremely unusual. They also were very intentional. They didn't like, it wasn't a last minute, we should stop by the dollar store and see what, we should bring something, he's the king. They, it wasn't like that. They had a lot of thought that went into these gifts. Gold, all the gifts they gave spoke to the identity of who this baby was. Who this Jesus, this Messiah was. He was the king of the Jews. He is the king of kings. So they gave gold, fitting gift for a king. They gave frankincense, representing the anointing because he is the anointed one. And they gave myrrh, which would be used at somebody's burial. Because this baby Jesus had a destiny to be fulfilled. He would come 100% God and 100% man. He would live a sinless life. He would die on a cross. 
crucified, the sins of the world, yours and mine, would be put on him and nailed to that cross. He would die. He would be buried, and three days later, he would rise from the dead. Gifts were extremely intentional. Speaking to who Jesus really was. And in our church family, there are some people that have spent their lives speaking to other people's identity. And we want to celebrate today your identity in Christ. Londa and Jada, will you please come real quickly? Look at you too. You look so Christmassy. <laughs> God bless you both. Uh, you both are extraordinary servants. And uh, you serve uh, in the way you pray for me and for Renee and for this church family. Uh, serve on the healing team, ministering healing to other people. And when broken people come, and you know this, sometimes when they're broken on the outside, they're also broken inside. So you need to pray into and speak into who they really are, how God sees them. Thank you for doing that. That's so valuable. And it means so much to this family. So we understand that you moved into a newer house. And so you got a driveway that's going to need to be taken care of. So we have a snowblower for you. <laughs> She said, Jada wants to start a snow-blowing business. All right. And also a shopping day for you, Jade, as well. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Merry Christmas. Give them a hand, will you? God bless you. One of the things, one of the things that we've been able to do as a church family is, uh, is not just this season take care of those in our family and give honor where honor is due, but also with us pulling together, uh, we've been able to help take care of some people in our community, and I want you to see some of that via video. Let's check that out, and I'll be right back. A real Christmas, sharing the love of God with as many as we can. 1 Thessalonians 5 says, speak encouraging words to one another. Build up hope so you'll all be together in this. No one left out and no one left behind. Christmas is the perfect time to bring hope and give blessings to our community. Everyone needs to feel warm and loved during the holidays. And Mount Hope, you made this possible. With so many children in the foster care network, we partnered with JCPenney to provide 350 winter coats. Our church family wrapped each coat with love and we gifted them to St. Vincent's, Highfields, Angel House, Bethany Christian Services, Courage Church, and others around this community. You also made it possible to share God's kindness with our local schools. We're bringing Christmas to the kids! By providing new shoes to students at Waverly High School and by providing gifts to the amazing counselors and updating the counseling rooms. Hi, we're Jacob and Don Bender, and we are the pastors at Courage Church in Detroit. We were serving in New York City. We didn't have a car. We didn't need a car. And uh, when we got here, the church provided a cargo van, yeah. which was great, and it was provision. And then someone burned it in the middle of the night. Just woke uh, up one night and looked outside the window, and just the whole thing was on fire. And so then from there, uh, there was a car that was provided for us through the church. And then we had our fourth child, and it wasn't, we ran out of it seats. Wasn't big enough, so um, yeah. It wasn't big enough. And someone, someone else gave us a van. Then at yeah. one point we had an accident and yeah. the van was totaled. The van just got T-boned, totaled the van, but every kid walked away just totally fine. Told him, hey, Pastor Kevin, we were in a car accident. And right away he, he fired back at us. He's like, we want to help. Our whole lives have been that. It's been miracle to miracle to miracle to miracle. We, we, we wouldn't be able to have anything that we have if it weren't for that. Thank you, Pastor Kevin and Mount Hope, just for your incredible generosity toward our family and toward the people of Detroit. We love you. Tis the season to be home for the holidays, and this year you've made this reality a blessing to one of our MSU grad students from Brazil. 
after six years of not being home for Christmas, we were able to surprise her by covering the travel cost so she could spend the holidays home with her family. You're going home for Christmas! <laughs> From helping out with gifts for the children at Sparrow Hospital to loving on our precious widows, you have carried hope to those needing an extra boost of encouragement this season. Once again, we partnered with Longhorn Steakhouse and Spare Time Entertainment Center, hosting a fun day for all the kids at St. Vincent's Children's Home with Pastor Peter and friends. The kids had a blast, made new friends, ate like kings and queens at Longhorn Steakhouse, and made lifelong memories filled with joy. Mount Hope, thank you for bringing a real Christmas. my heart, Mount Hope, thank you so much for helping take care of Jacob and Dawn in uh, Detroit, needing a vehicle, and you came through and provided a vehicle for them to practically meeting needs of kids. It was so cool last year being at Longhorn Steakhouse with uh, a young boy sitting next to me, and he was so excited because he got to use the adult, a real menu, not the kid's menu. He's like, yes! He was so excited, and this year, kids were ordering steak and lobster, and they didn't even know what lobster was. Well, like, yes! <laughs> and listen, this is Longhorn pays for that, right? And, and the staff there, they're so cool. They love what you're doing to be part of this. So they all took a collection to buy gifts for the kids themselves. You know, so from what I see happening, what we're able to do together, just for all of that, I say a huge, heartfelt thank you. Thank you so much. It was a few years ago, the Lord really began to take me on a journey in caring for the, the kids in our community that don't have a home. And they hit this time of year, and probably more than ever, it stands out that I'm not with a mom and dad, or that I'm in a facility, and, and it's hard, it's difficult. And uh, we, we began a partnership with St. Vincent's Home for Children, and uh, and we support them. When you give to Mount Hope Missions, part of what you're doing is you're helping support locally kids that have been displaced, that need family and need homes. And I thank you for doing that. And some of you help practically as well by mentoring there and investing in kids. We've decided this year we want to take things up a notch. We want to help kids before they even land there. I had a meeting recently with St. Vincent's in the office here at the church, and they said, we have kids that need a place to stay, but they, it's better for them if they're not just sent into a facility like this. It's not good for them. Like, we need a, we need a landing place, and we want to be part of that solution. Christine Lau, would you please come and tell us a little bit about what's coming this year as we as a church are going to help make that a reality. Thank you. Yeah, I am very, very excited uh, about what's coming to Mount Hope. There's a program called Safe Families, and it is hosted uh, by Bethany Christian Services, and Mount Hope is partnering with them. And actually, I'm really excited to announce that Mount Hope Church is going to be the lead church for the Safe Families program here in our entire area. Yeah. So what that means to you guys is you get to partner with us. Safe Families is exactly what Pastor Kevin was saying. It is a, a program that helps people before the kids land into foster care. It's a preventative measure. So if you have a family in need, a crisis, whether it's a mom that needs to be hospitalized and doesn't have family in the area to take care of their kids, those kids would normally go into foster care, but they don't need to. What, Say Families does is they take in those kids and you in the church, you are host families and you do what we're supposed to do. We link arm in arm with those families in crisis and we take them into our home and we care for them. And then the biological parents have the opportunity to heal, whether it's medical, whether they need to find a job, get back on their feet, whatever it is, the whole church wraps around. It's like a circle. So yeah. even the church, you can be a mentor, you can be a 
you can be a respite grandma, come and take the kids. Um, there's lots of opportunities that you can do to help these kids, and we get to be a part of it. We get to be a part of what God called us to do, yeah. and that's to care for the orphans. He called me to do that about 10 years ago, and I'm just so excited that now this is here, this is now. It's like a real Christmas for me uh, that we get to, and actually I was hired by Bethany Christian Services to be the coordinator for our Lansing chapter. So I'm really excited to be a part of that. Um, <laughs> In the narthex, there's a table there, the Safe Families representative, the national representatives here, along with another coordinator. Uh, if you want more information, ask questions, I'm going to be there as well. And you can sign up for just gathering more information, and we'll be in touch. So it's going to be great. Thank you, Christine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hey, hold on just a second. Christine, this has been Christine's heart, as you said, for about 10 years. And I know we've had those conversations, and I love your heart. Uh, for kids that have, have, they need help. And uh, I applaud your heart. We want to do something to bless you. So we heard you need a stove. So we have a stove for you. Merry Christmas. And we want to send you and your kids to Guatemala on a missions trip this year. Merry Christmas. God bless you. There, that's yours right there. Okay, this is for you, Christine. You're going on a missions trip. Merry Christmas. Thank you. Appreciate you so much. There you go. Merry Christmas, Christine. Will you give Christine a hand? Thank you so much for your heart. Thank you. <clears throat> Scripture says that, let's read it one more time. When they saw the star, they were filled with joy, great joy, exceedingly great joy. They entered the house and saw the child with his mother, Mary. They bowed down and worshipped him. They entered the house, saw the child with Mary. They bowed down, they worshipped him. Just a deep expression of such love and adoration. Then they opened treasure chests. They gave him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. If we fast forward from this scene to Matthew 25, we see the great contrast all over again. But this time, Jesus is not the baby. He's coming back as the king of kings to judge the living and the dead. And the great divide, the great contrast of hearts that is seen in Matthew 25, there are those that are genuine followers of Jesus that love him, and there are pretenders. How do you see the difference of those hearts, those people? Jesus said, it's all seen in how they treat other people. Jesus said it like this. He said, when I was naked, you clothed me. When I was hungry, you fed me. When I was in prison, you visited me. Hey, when did we ever, Jesus, when did we ever see you needing anything? When you've done it to the least of these, he said, you've done it to me. And so this Christmas season... I pray that we go out of this place with hearts rejoicing with exceeding great joy. The joy of Jesus gets on the inside of us. And I pray that inner joy becomes visible on the outside. Yeah, in the way that we bow down and worship the King of Kings. And also in the way we practically love those around us. Would you stand to your feet with me right now? If you would close your eyes for just a moment. Some of you are here today and you're not sure that you've, you've made your peace with God, that your sins are forgiven, that you've been adopted into God's family. But you would say today, Pastor Kev, would you pray with me? Because I need to get right with God. I need to have my sins forgiven. I can't afford to try and wait till later on, think maybe a different day. I need today. I need to ask God to forgive me of sins. I need to be adopted into God's family. You know, there's only one, there's only one way to cross the great divide that sin creates between man and God. The only way is by placing our faith in Jesus. Most of the world tries to cross the divide by trying to be good. They try to be better, and it's never enough. It will never work. The only way any of us can come to God 
is by placing our faith in what that baby Jesus came to do, to give his lives for us, so that we could be what you, you perhaps heard called saved. Saved from what? Saved from an eternity in hell. So that you could be what the Bible calls adopted, adopted into God's family. That's his master plan for you, always has been. Would you close your eyes with me? And if you say, Pastor God, would you pray that prayer? Uh, at the count of three, would you just quickly shoot your hand up in the sky and just wave it at me so I can see you? Are you ready without any delay? One, two, three. Shoot your hand up and wave it at me all across this auditorium. Thank you. Thank you. How many more? Real quickly, just wave it at me. Thank you, friend. Thank you. Up in the balcony. Thank you. Thank you. Let's do this. Uh, I can't see all of them, but I want a chance to see you eyeball to eyeball. So I'm going to ask you to uh, get out of your seat and come on down. And let's pray eyeball to eyeball together right now. Will you give them a hand as they come? Come on. Come on down. Let's pray together right now. Thank you. Thank you. That's right. Come on down. Come on down real close, will you? Thank you. God bless you. Come on down, folks. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. The King is here. God bless you. The King you. is here. God bless you. This is a good day. The love will never, ever leave. God bless you. The King is here. The King is here. King is here. Come on over here, will you guys? Come over real close. Right this way. Of me. The King Come is right here. here. God bless you. Thank you. I'm going to ask you to do this. Some of you perhaps already have. Would you ask the person on your right and on your left, just say something simple like this. Do you need to be down there and pray that prayer? And if they say yes, then I'll go with you. Then y'all just come together, okay? Come on, in the balcony main floor, everybody ask the person on your right, on your left. King is here, King is here. There we go. Thank you. You're Perfect. Perfect. Of me. Thank you. God bless you. King is here. King is here. No beautiful plan. And the only way we can become part of his family is by placing our faith in what Jesus came to do and he accomplished for us. He said these words on the cross, it is finished. What is his plan to adopt you finished? Paid for, complete. Are you ready to pray? And if you're still standing there thinking, I should go down there, well then get down here. Okay? Let's pray together right now. For all those that came down to pray with me, the big deal is this, that this prayer comes right from your heart, right to the heart of God. He's listening to every word, so we're going to make every word count. Say this with me. Will you say, Father in heaven, I thank you for your son Jesus. I believe that he died. He was buried. And he rose from the dead. He gave his life for me. So I give my life to you. Everything that I am and all that I hope to be, I belong to you. I thank you, Jesus. My sins are forgiven. I've got a brand new start in life. And I'm adopted into your family. Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Hey, God bless you, friends. If you would take just a moment, uh, some of my friends should have handed you a little book that I wrote just a gift from me to you. Merry Christmas. 
inside that there's a little card. If you would take just a minute to fill that out, you don't have to. If you would, I just want to send you an email every day this week. Say, hey, I'm praying for you. Celebrate. I'm glad for the decision that you made. And, and then I hope to see you in Growth Track. It starts up in January, right after this service down toward the event center. We want to get you on a track of growing in Jesus. This isn't about just like a one-time thing. You just started the adventure of a lifetime. And we want to be part of that with you. Hey, is there filling this out? Let's sing this together, okay, Steve? And then we'll, we'll formally dismiss in just a second. The King is here. The King is here. and the story of the wise men was something that doesn't sound very like a grand finale basically says they went back to where they came from they just took a different route but I would be convinced that they went back not the same I think they went back changed they had bowed before the king of kings so my prayer for you my friend this Christmas season is that your hearts would be changed I pray that the joy of Jesus gets on the inside of you. I ask that this Christmas season, God would grant you two things, comfort for every bit of brokenness and hurt, unanswered questions, and joy. Not just joy, the joy of Jesus. His joy gets on the inside of you. And may together we spend all of our days bowing down, worshiping Jesus, and letting that be seen in the way we love other people. God bless you and Merry Christmas.